uh, obviously appreciate you guys all being here. Thank you. Um, thanks for covering us as always. Uh, obviously, very happy with Saturday. Proud of our guys. Uh, to, to win on senior day, I think, is really, really important. Um, to, I thought we played great defense for most of the day, save a play or two. I thought we uh, ran the football and were really efficient on offense. Um, and special teams, I thought uh, Isaac Power and really all our specialists, Rauschenberg kicking the ball off in the punting game. I don't know if I've ever been a part of that many balls inside the six. So I thought, I thought it was just a great team win. Great atmosphere. Appreciated all the, the uh, uh, fans and students. I thought that was awesome. Uh, you know, back to back weeks to have that, that crowd, that atmosphere. I thought the people that work here that do the music and the in game stuff, I thought were, were elite. And I think uh, our game day atmosphere for the recruits that were there and the people that were there is as good as anywhere. So for that, I'm very, very grateful. Um, looking very much looking forward to, to tr finishing out the regular season this week. Um, as I told our guys, not many times in life that you're going to have a chance to win 11 games. And uh, it's a chance for opportunity for us to go 1 0 this week, uh, go on the road. Um, and understanding that uh, the the uh, um, symmetry of being 1 11 the first year and a chance to be 11 1 is certainly not lost on me or lost on our guys. So uh, obviously, Kansas is a tremendous challenge for us. I think it starts with Puka. Uh, he's as dynamic a player as there is in the country. And we saw that firsthand last year with the long run he had down the right sideline. He had more you know, rushing yards against Iowa State than our team did. So yeah, I think if things start with him, Carter Stanley's playing really, really well. Uh, they've got a good group of receivers. Parchment's a deep threat. And uh, defensively, you know, we're going to have to find a way to run the football and, and uh, hopefully, um, hopefully uh, uh, keep our defense off the field. So it'll be a, a great test, a great challenge for us. Our guys will have some subtle changes with uh, fall break and Thanksgiving break. And, let our guys go home a little bit, but I'm sure our guys will stay focused on the process this week and and uh, try to go one and zero. Matt, uh, you guys have been so focused for every game this year. Uh, Clinch the Big Twelve championship game, Bird. Are, are you concerned at all about looking forward? Uh, I'm always concerned about everything, which is why, to me, all I talk about is process. You know, um, I thought we were a little unfocused to begin the game, which sometimes happens. I mean, it's the first time I've ever had a corner. Uh, be so offsides that they call the play back, you know, obviously, you know, turn the ball over the second play of the game. But I thought our guys did a nice job of regrouping. So I think there's always concerns about, hey, where are we at mentally? I thought we were in a really good place again last night. We practiced last night. Uh, guys were focused. Um, I think uh, I think people understand. They understand that we win because, you know, not because of who we are, but because of what we do. And uh, we're, you know, we've won 10 games because we try to go 1-0 each week. And I think they understand that um, – this will be a tw tr tremendous challenge anytime you play on the road and play a team that really should have beat Iowa State last year. Had a chance to beat Iowa State last week. A team that went to Boston College and beat up on Boston College. A team that beat Texas Tech. So we understand what we're getting ready for. And um, uh, so I, I think you have to just trust the players. You have to just trust the locker room. Um, and they did that last week. And there was no doubt they were going to do it last week. I had no doubt that they were going to be ready. And I'd say, you know, I was in the training room this morning where guys were getting treatment. And um, they look very focused again this week, understanding that um, this, will be a, this will be a challenge. Other than Puka Williams, what else about their offense do you need to be concerned about? Um, they have a tremendous rhythm passing. I mean, they kind of established who they are. They made a change in coordinators uh, halfway through the year. And um, the quarterback's really, really accurate. Threw for, I think, 350 last week. Um, you know, he does a really nice job of, of being patient, taking what we give you, and then they have a big play presence down the field. You know, they, uh, Parchments beat people on, you know, posts and go balls and run by people. And um, so that's always a challenge to us is, A, eliminate the big play. But if you try to – if you try to get an extra guy in the box to take care of Puka, they have they have the ability to go up over the top of you, and they have a really good offensive line. Uh, they have uh, they have guys who are going to be next level players. So um, when they've clicked like they did last week, and they did uh, I think well, it was three or four weeks ago, uh, they've put a lot of points on the board. So we're going to have to you know they had a, every chance to beat Texas uh, at Texas, and so uh, we're going to have to play really well defensively to try to limit them and, and understanding that. But it really is that conflict of trying to take away the running game knowing they have a deep play game, and then the quarterback's really patient. He's going he's gonna to take what you give you. You talked about the break. What, do you, what exactly do you do in terms of practice, and getting them ready and getting them back here? And all well, that? there's no school Wednesday, so we'll practice in the morning and let the guys go around 3 and let them go home th uh, Wednesday night and come back Thursday at 7. Then we'll do our walkthrough and stuff Thursday night, and then we'll practice full speed Friday morning again and then leave. So, um, you know, it's one of the great things about – the Texas kids coming to Texas, you know, coming to Baylor, staying in the state of Texas, is then go home for Thanksgiving. You know, they can 
bring me back a plate of something, hopefully. And mm-hmm. and uh, but uh, a lot of our guys, and some of our guys will stay here. We'll have something for them. Invite them over to coaches' houses, have a dinner or whatever. But uh, a lot of our guys will group up and go to people's houses and have fun. Is there an update on Charlie and uh, I mean, what's the overall health of your team going into Kansas? I think we're as healthy as really any team in college football would be right now. I think uh, um, a lot of that credit goes to first to our strength staff and as well as our medical staff. I mean, last week there was guys, hey, questionable, 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 and they all played. Um, came out of the game, you know, uh, obviously Charlie, A, took that big hit, and the officials sent him out of the game. And, uh, you know, the officials said to me, Coach, we got to be careful. I said, absolutely, man. I, I appreciated them doing that. I, uh, I love when people, you know, pe- the people who are in charge protect the players from the officials. You know, I thought the officials did a great job of protecting the players, and that's our job. Um, and then, you know, the doctor said, hey, let's hold him and see, you know, just see what's going on. So he, he, uh, he he's fine to go. He's cleared to go. He also rolled his ankle, so he's been kind of gimping around a little bit. So, um, but I'm sure Charlie will be, you know, ready to go. And, uh, you know, Xavier Newman would be questionable at this point, and if Rumor going to be questionable, both those guys uh, came out of the game with injuries. Um, so, you know, Xavier went back in the game. So knowing him, his toughness, I'm sure he'll he'll find a way to get himself ready. Yeah, uh, Denzel, he, he's he's pretty much been a, a, a tremendous player since he got here. Have you seen him evolve? Maybe kind of work on the little things to, to improve. Yeah, I think every year we've challenged. You know, there was a time where we said, hey, you know, you're not very good versus 50-50 balls, you know, jump balls. And as you can see on Saturday, he's become one of the best 50-50 ball guys around. We challenge him to get better getting in and out of his breaks, um, not just be like a deep, you know, deep run by a guy, but a guy who can run the whole all the routes. He's definitely done that. I challenged him earlier in this year to be a better blocker, and he's definitely done that. Um, and the biggest challenge from last year this year was – you know, being able to play when you don't feel 100%. You know, sometimes you're a guy who's a track guy and, you you know, you're used to, hey, I've got to feel primed up and ready. This is a game of attrition. It's a war of attrition. Who can play when they don't feel 100%? And um, he's been proof positive of that, man, from training camp to, the, you know, the thumb surgery to all the way through the year. He's played through everything. And, um, you know, I, uh, I really enjoy – I really enjoy watching players grow, and no one's grown football-wise on or off the field as much as Denzel has. Kansas defense, what do they do best? Um, they take away the run. I mean, they're a true three, four, two gap. New England Patriots, big guys, you know, strike you up front. Um, so it's a challenge to find, you know, easy runs. And then, uh, uh, you know, the, the quarters coverage team, um, they, they played a little bit more aggressively against Iowa State. And that's really been what people have done against us. People have come out against us and just said, you know what, we're going to blitz them. But um, I, I like the way that they play. They're well put together on defense. They, uh, they, uh, I like teams that play that way. They're, they just kind of try to knock you back and stop the run and, and, and try to overload you in terms of leverages. And, you know, we're an inside zone team. That, that's kind of what they're built to take away. So there's some inherent challenges there, um, especially with Charlie, you know, being a little banged up. Probably don't want to run the quarterback too much. So there's some challenges, you know, dealing with some of those things. And uh, uh, we have to put together a good plan to make sure that, you know, because really the quarterback run game has really been something we've done the last couple of weeks at a high, high level. We've got to find a way to continue that without him. Last couple, last couple of weeks have been some pretty – charged up atmospheres, big time games going there to Kansas. Is there anything you have to guard against? Maybe a little bit slower start just because there may not be that same energy in the city? Yeah, you know, um, Andy Reid told me a long time, he said, all great teams do three things, and I can never remember the third one, but the number, the one and two were eliminate distractions and create energy. <laughs> I can't remember the third one. Either. And uh, so we have to, you know, you have to create, create energy. Um, you know, I think to me the biggest thing that I've tried to get across to our guys is um, – the games that we call big games, well, they're big games because we're playing. They're not big games because of who we're playing. They're big games because we're playing. And this is a huge game, huge game. This is the biggest game of the year. And, um, um, you know, we're playing against good players. We're, we're going on the road. There's all these challenges. You know, going on the road is always a challenge. The weather could be a challenge. It says it's going to rain. It says it's going to be 20-mile-an-hour winds. All those things are challenges, but it's a big game because we're playing in it. And, um, you know, I want our team to go out there. And we challenged them after the Oklahoma game to have a championship mindset. Um, I thought we did at times in the game. We also put the ball on the ground too many times and did stupid stuff that we have to eliminate. And, and I told them I'm not tolerating some of those things anymore. Um, so we, we need to have a championship, championship mindset this entire week to go 1-0 and this week. But, you know, the, the day of our guys thinking, well, this is a big game because we're playing these guys, that's gone. It's been gone this whole year. It's a big game because we're playing in it, and uh, this is the biggest game of the season. And the preparation so far has felt that way, and it, it'll continue to feel that way. Matt, how have you seen your secondary evolve, evolve since you 
you got here. And has, has it evolved just about as much as any position group? Yeah, um, you know, even, you know, we lost our two starting car- starting corners last year. You know, Graylin makes a move from corner to safety. Uh, you know, it's a lot of the same guys, but they've really grown and matured. Um, you know, I was talking to someone earlier, they were asking, you know, at the end of the day, to me, this season is about as much about what Phil Snow's done as anything else. You know, I, you know, I stand up here, people, you know, people say good things about me when we win, you know. Um, I mean, I think this is, this year has been about Phil Snow. It's been about Evan Cooper and Mike Saravo and Frank, the job that they've done on defense, transforming what we do on defense. And it's been about the players. The players on defense have really grown and become really good players. And there's a lot of veterans in the secondary. Um, you know, you have some younger guys. Kalen Barnes is playing a ton. Raleigh's playing a ton. But I think our, our guys in the secondary have realized, like, hey, we're, you know, we're pretty good players. Like, you know, we played all man on third down this past game. We haven't ever really done that before. And we said, you know what, we're going to con- try to evolve and be a – a better man-to-man team. You know, you got the Jamison Houston out there playing bump and run, you know, on third and five, fourth and five, and, and those guys came through. So uh, I think uh, I think our secondary, the elimination of big plays and winning on third down has been as crucial to, to our success on defense as anything else. What does it mean to coach against someone with the track record of Wes Miles? Uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, I said earlier uh, to the coaches in there, you know, you think about the two coaches in the state of Kansas, there's a reason why they've improved from maybe, you know, where they started the season or where people thought maybe they were going to start the season between Coach Kleiman and Coach Miles. Those two guys have won national championships. And for me, as a, just a lover of college football, to, you know, the things that he did at Oklahoma State and then LSU and that, you know, he'll do at Kansas, um, you know, bringing championships and winning culture to those places. Um, it's an honor for me. I mean, I love college football. I love college football coaches. So anytime you have a chance to go against someone that you, you know, as a young coach, I was watching, you know, the Mad Hatter and with tremendous respect, you know, and and uh, so he's been good to me the times I've met him, and um, I'm looking forward to, to having a chance to compete against him. Matt, you talked about how good your special teams were. Your deep snapper also had his first career sack. <laughs> Just the way that he's stepped up since Clay. Yeah, he's been uh, Ross has been uh, unbelievable, and we think Ross is a great linebacker. Like I didn't want him to not play linebacker this year. I really thought he could be a special linebacker, and he's a great snapper. And I'm looking forward to him having a chance to snap at the next level doing that. But you, you also know with him, you get a guy who can also run down on kickoff and play on teams. And um, he played more football this past Saturday than he had you know the previous weeks to give our other guys a blow. And I thought he played great. You know, he's a guy that practices a hundred miles an hour. And um, it shows up, and then I thought that was, you know, for him to have a sack and a big-time hit, a big-time play, I mean, that was textbook. You know, we'll, we'll put that on our tackling teach tape of, you know, uh, same foot, same shoulder, uh, re- really proud of the way he played. All right. Thank you. Thanks, guys. You guys have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank